Howdy folks, how's everybody doing? This is Bernie. Uh, welcome back to the next episode of the Ratings Wars. You can see on the screen here we're going to pick off exactly where we left it off last episode. Uh, Mr. Little Midget Argentinian centre half there, Mateo Masaccio, picked up a bit of a nasty injury. We apply a, a, a consumable card on him to wipe off the injury. We go into the player roles and we already realise that everyone's assigned to the roles. We thought uh, maybe uh, Tchaikovsky and Orlana weren't on the set pieces, but they are. So we're just going to jump into the first game, and he's got, and they're starting to build what looks like to be a budget Prem team. He's got O'Shea and Cahill at the back, uh, Arteta and Cleverly in midfield. We're going to get this episode kicked off, 28th minute, nothing's happened up until here. Lovely little fake shot and a weak foot shot from Tchaikovsky into the far corner. Tim Howard was being an absolute machine in this game. Until this moment, Diawara, header, Tr Howard can't do anything other than palm it up into the air, and it's a keezer there with a lovely little diving header. 30th minute puts us 1-0 up and it was thoroughly deserved to be honest with you we were on top this whole game it was a bit uh, I felt a bit dirty scoring a goal like that it was a bit uh, cheap and uh, not very pretty but uh, we pick up a free kick just before half time we set Joukowsky over it and against the silver keeper that's probably in but against Tim Howard uh, it, I, I felt it was a pretty decent free kick so I'll show you anyway you can see there from the stats he hasn't had a single shot on target we've had six we're dominating uh, we move into the 57th minute and this is where um the clips for Stefan and Beer start to show you just how OP this guy is and how beastly he is. And I know those two words are overused. Everyone seems to be a beast and everyone seems to be OP in foot these days. But Mbia really is. For the coins you can pick him up for, he plays like a 79, an 80, maybe even an 81 gold player. He's absolutely fantastic for the, uh, the silver teams. You can see that he sets Giroud through. And with Giroud with that much space and time, I can't stop him. Even when he cuts inside onto his very, very weak right foot, he's severely left-footed. Uh, he cuts inside and I can't stop him scoring. We go into the 82nd minute. He's swinging another corner. Diawara wins the first header. Comes off the post. Bit of a bit of a, a kerfuffle in the box there. Bit of a mix-up. Bit scrappy. Stefan and Beer shows up and shows quite a lot of balance for a CDM to sort of turn, pivot, and swipe it into the far corner all in one motion. We're now three one up and he decides to reply in kind off a corner. It's Gary Cahill beating three men there and it's either a Gary Cahill goal or it's a Nelson own goal depending on how you look at it. it he was going to go in either way, wasn't it? You don't need the dubious goal panel to decide that one. Stefan and Beer picks up two goals there. We're going to go into the match ratings afterwards and you can see here that it's Diawara, Drakowski and Stefan and Beer and Akiza that all pick up the eight or above the magic silver rating to upgrade into a gold. This is where we're going to take a slightly different change in the series. I've realized that if we continue at the rate we're currently going, we're going to have a full gold team by the time I get to Division 5, Division 4. That's not what I wanted to happen. I wanted the gold team to sort of coincide with breaking into Division 2, maybe in Division 1. So um, you can see that we, we, won the, we won the title, we picked up 3k coins. What we're going to do is um, we're only going to do one player upgrade per match. So out of all the players that achieve an 8 or above, I, I'm only allowed to pick one that I can upgrade into a gold from this point forward. Just slows things down a bit, just makes sure that there's only one upgrade per match. I've got to play more games, I've got to win more games in order to upgrade into the gold team. And obviously as the divisions get harder, it's going to get more difficult to achieve those 8 ratings. So it should make the series a bit more interesting to watch because I swept through the bronzes quite quickly. I went from... Uh, the starter pack to the bronze to the silvers very very quickly I don't want that to happen with the golds I don't want them to spend five or six divisions playing with exactly the same team because that's going to get stale it's not going to be very varied it's going to be quite boring anyway uh, that's enough of me rambling we're going to jump into the second episode the second game of the episode here you can see we come up against the first proper 100 chem quality team and it really does tell in this match we get off with a really really good start a lovely threaded through ball in behind two defenders there and a first time finish from DOR I didn't expect him to do that but it was a lovely finish. He swings in a corner, and look at this from Philippe Maxes. That's the centre half there. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know he's actually a pretty decent uh, footballer in real life. I'll never forget the overhead bicycle kick in the Champions League for AC Milan. What a superb goal that was! But yeah, in centre half on Ultimate Team. It, it don't usually score goals like that but I can't really complain with a silver goalkeeper in the nets you can see here we make quite a few mistakes we don't really clear the ball we're trying to pass it out the back rather than maybe just pressing square or circle to hoof it up the field and getting rid of it it falls to Kaka a little bit of close dribbling from him and again with a silver keeper up against gold uh, players gold cams and gold strikers having shots I don't really stand much of a chance there Orellana comes through and this is again a pretty dirty goal to be honest with you it's just a straight line run a little dink down beer and he smacks it into the 
top left corner and he's starting to really really shine he's the best defensive player in the team he's the best aerial player in the team he's the top scorer in the team so far he's an absolutely quality player and you can see here we actually get a message from the other guy he sends he takes the time in between the goals to uh so, ah I, i've actually going to cut it out there he sent us a message that just said um op as fuck basically about as I, I assume he's talking about stefan and beer anyway he threads through mario balotelli just before half time makes it three two but you can see that even though he's got the better team and he's winning we've actually had much more of the ball we've had 60 to 40 percent possession we've had more shots and i really felt like i should be have been doing much better in this game but i just could not live with balotelli the combination of his straight line speed and his strength and look at that on first glance that looks like an absolutely top quality goal it looks like one of the strikes that only a couple of players in this game can score but on the replay when we slow it down you can actually see that the shot from balotelli is probably going to go wide and the keeper in his attempt to save it has actually palmed it back into the corner so it's probably the keeper's dive that's put it in the net and it was at that point that i realized if i want to um actually start winning games in these divisions and moving forward i can't have yole in goal i can't have a silver keeper i've got to get him as gold as quick as possible you can see that quite a um, another little finish he sort of balotelli steps over the ball opens up his body and with this uh, strong right foot fades it it curls it into the top corner lovely goal we lose that game but you can see here once again it's in beer it's raquel City, and it's diawara that achieve the eights um, you can probably guess of those three which one I'm going to pick because Trakowski and Mbia are just too, too godly to upgrade. We switch out Diawara for Benzema and at this point you might be thinking how on earth have you afforded Benzema? What I've decided to do is fund the account with a bit of gold from another account that I have. Um, basically at this point of Ultimate Team, FIFA's quite old now and the only time Road to Glory is where you start literally from the bottom and work your way up to the top without any FIFA points without any transfers, without any uh, buying and selling or making trade offers from your main accounts and just literally only have coins from match winning and trading. The only time that works is right at the beginning when Ultimate Team, when everybody's starting off. When Ultimate Team, we've already gone past like the halfway point and the team of the years, the team of the seasons are coming out quite soon. People, they don't really want to be watching you start from scratch. They want to be watching Neymar's, they want to be watching Ebra's, they want to be seeing you do 500k or a million coin or 10,000 coin FIFA point pack openings. They want to be seeing the massive things happen. So I'm going to try and get this series going with a bit of gold and try and pick up some of the more highly, highly rated players if that's all right. Um, you can see here we give away a pretty pretty sloppy penalty. It is a penalty, no complaints. Santi Cazola bags it away. Through ball from Benzema into Drakowski and on his weak foot, the keeper's rushing. We do a little, little dink. I was quite worried that the centre back was actually going to get there and clear the ball because it had absolutely no power on the chip. But it just manages to drift into the corner. It's one all in the 39th minute and we send Orellana through. And this again is a dirty goal. I think about the fake shot here, but. I can see with the intent that he's steaming across with big uh, Diakite that he's literally just going to come and try and run into me and try and uh, nudge me off the ball. Orlana versus Diakite in terms of strength is an absolute no contest. So I decided to just run in a straight line and hope that he's going to miss the tackle. He does. We score once again, even though we've come up against a better team. We've got more shots. We've got more possession. We should be ahead, which we are. It's 2-1 at half time. The next highlight is in the 67th minute. We managed to win the ball back here with Joukowsky. He plays it up to Orellana. Orellana runs down to the, towards the right wing. Lovely little uh, through ball in behind two defenders. And Benzema basically replicates the exactly the same goal we scored with Dior early on in the series. It's the first goal that Benzema scored for us, and it, to be honest with you, it was the first time in the entire game where I actually felt like Benzema did anything. Um, this is just your yeah, simple, simple goal. He threads it into Remy. Remy on the weak foot. Again, silver goalkeeper. The problem with Yol, um, sorry, Ruben. I keep calling him Yol, don't I? He was the bronze. Ruben, uh, the problem with Ruben is he's quite short for a keeper. Anyway, uh, we thread through Tchaikovsky in the 90th minute, and once Piotr Tchaikovsky is in that position, you pretty much know what's going to happen. He will always, outside of the foot, power shot into that top corner. He always buries them. He is, if I was to pick up two players from this entire Ratings War series so far, it would be Mbia and Tchaikovsky to recommend. They play like golds. They aren't that expensive. They're very, very easy to hybrid, especially because they have a strong leap between each other. They both play for the same league. Uh, sorry, they both play for the same league. Yeah, of course they do they're both in the same league they both play for the same club uh, Sevilla so they're very very easy to strong link together and you've got the German link there that we can branch into the Bundesliga which is what a lot of people do with Tchaikovsky you can see here that at the end of the match ratings we've chosen to upgrade Orellana and we're browsing through we think David Villa we think maybe Dos Santos both got four star skills both good going forward 
we end up going with with the uh, the Andres Guardado, and some of you might be thinking, oh, you've just gone for the paciest player, and you're right, I have gone for the paciest player, purely because Juan Fran, our silver left back, is dreadful. He's slow, he's clumsy, he's not very good in the air, he doesn't win the ball back very well, he hasn't got much pace, he's incredibly weak, we can see a hell of a lot of chances of people just running down the right-hand side of the pitch. Andres Guardado has 87 pace, but the most importantly for me, he also has 72 defending, he's actually played left back quite a lot for Valencia, so he's going to sort of um, supplement uh, one friend and become our second left back. Anyway, thank you guys. That's all for this episode. I'll see you next time. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.